huge. Huge. Massive. Massive. Oh, huge. Yeah. Huge. Massive. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> Okay, so this episode is pretty simple. We're looking at one of the biggest things in the universe and one of the smallest things in the universe. Man-made and nature-made. It's gonna be huge! Uh, it's just like nearly ran away. Uh, what do you reckon is the biggest thing in the universe? A galaxy, obviously not ours. The biggest thing, the sun. What's that one in Abu Dhabi? It's like the biggest building in the world. That one. What do you reckon is the smallest thing in the universe? I, I think probably Pluto. An embryo. Some type of plankton. Microchips. Like an atom. <laughs> okay, let's start with the big stuff. And to give us a sense of scale, what are the biggest things people have made? The longest continuous structure is one section of the Great Wall of China, which runs more than 6,000 kilometres. The largest single structure by volume is the Boeing Everett factory, which builds aeroplanes. It's a massive 13.3 million cubic metres. And the biggest design structure is the Lisa Interferometer, set in space with arms 2.5 million kilometres across to pick up gravitational waves. It has a planned launch date in 2034. In all likelihood, the largest man-made structure is the hole in the ozone layer, which in the year 2000 measured more than three and a half times the size of Australia. And humans helped create that. The internet might be larger still, though measuring it is kind of tricky. The biggest thing in the world is, well, the world itself, at a little over 6,300 kilometres in radius. But more than one million Earths are needed to fill up the volume of the sun, which is the biggest thing in our solar system. But our sun is only a normal-sized star. The biggest star discovered so far is UY Scuti, which has a radius of 1,700 times the size of our suns. Bigger than stars themselves are galaxies of stars. And bigger than galaxies are clusters of galaxies. And bigger than clusters of galaxies are superclusters of galaxies. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall Supercluster is a benchmark for the largest structure in the universe at 10 billion light years end to end. <laughs> So one light year is the distance light travels in one year. Light travels 300,000 kilometres in one second. So 300,000 times 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, times 24 hours per day, times 365 days per year, is 9.5 trillion kilometres in a year, which is really far. The Hercules Corona supercluster is 10 billion light years, which is really big. We can't see everything in the universe, of course, but based on what we can see, the supercluster is a pretty good candidate for the biggest thing. What about the other end of the scale? Some of the smallest things we've got some evidence for are things like quarks, electrons and bosons, which are kind of hard to measure in size. To give us some sense of scale at this end of the spectrum, let's start again with the smallest stuff that humans have been able to make. John T. Hertwitz is the artist behind this tiny elephant, which is less than two tenths of a millimetre high. It was made using a technique called multi-photon lithography, which is basically about zapping light-sensitive polymers with different photons. Down below these structures at the nanoscale, scientists have been able to make lattices like this. Each strut in this structure is about one micrometre long, more than 100 times smaller than the tiny elephant. Smaller than things we've been able to make, beyond what we can see with a standard light microscope, we get to the smallest of the small. Our bodies are made up of molecules, which are themselves made up of atoms. Atoms are already pretty tiny, at around 100 picometers, one trillionth of a metre. We've recently been able to manipulate single atoms at a time. But inside the nucleus of an atom, you'll find protons and neutrons, which are estimated to be around 100,000 times smaller still. Inside every proton and neutron, there are three quarks. And we haven't been able to find any evidence of any substructures within these or other fundamental particles, like electrons, gluons, or the recently discovered Higgs boson. And to help us unravel which one of these small things might be the tiniest... What's a gluon? Yeah, so a gluon is a fundamental particle that's the force-carrying particle of the strong force, and that's the force that binds protons and neutrons together into atoms, for example. Is a gluon a fundamental particle? Yeah, so as far as we know, gluons are fundamental particles, and by that I mean that they're not divisible. So how do we, how do we measure the size of a fundamental particle? Um, yes, yeah, so, so you don't. <laughs> so basically, I guess the example of the photon is the easiest. 
Photons, as far as we know, don't have a diameter. So it's not like a, a tennis ball, it's a point particle. But um, they have quantum behavior, which means they act like both a particle and a wave. And through this quantum behavior, they get essentially a probabilistic size. So that means as it gets closer to another object, the chances of it interacting with that object gets greater. So you sort of have a, an interpretation of the photon as having some size. But that depends on its wavelength. And of course, we all know about wavelengths in light. There's different colors of light which have different wavelengths. And so then each of those defines sort of a different size for your photon. So what you mean by the size of a photon is a pretty complicated question and it depends. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So other than the universe, the next largest thing, if you can call it that, might be one of the huge superclusters of galaxies. While down on the super small scale, it looks like the tiniest we've got so far are the fundamental particles, electrons, quarks and bosons. But figuring out which is smaller is tricky. So that's it, the biggest and the smallest. Thanks guys for watching.